Good morning. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this webinar produced by Business Performance USA. It's one of our weekly webinars. We've been running these webinars since uh, 2013, believe it or not, and so we have well more than 100 webinars that we've run now, and we're always glad to welcome back one of our featured uh, webinar uh, presenters, and that's Mary Putnam. She loves to work with small businesses and is going to talk with us today about websites. So uh, let me tell you real quickly about Business Performance USA. Basically, we are a volunteer organization. We're an association that anyone can join, and we host these webinars every week at Tuesday at noon central to provide business insights on a variety of topics that are pertinent for business professionals. Um, we invite you to become a member and you can meet people from across the U.S. engaged in business conversations on topics such as we're presenting today. You'll find that our webinars are practical and we make sure that you can put something to work the moment you finish with the webinar. So become a member at businessperformanceusa.org. Many of the benefits is that you'll be able to hear on demand any of these webinars that we've presented because we have them out there for you to just select at will at any time. And uh, just so you know, our webinar today is on website conversion. And there I am. I'm Cynthia Stewart. I'm a managing partner with Evermore Services, your partner in building tomorrow's businesses today. And I'll be your host for this hour. And here's your executive presenter today. It's Mary Putnam. She's owner of Design Your Site. And she is, when you hear her bio, you'll see why we've invited her to, to give these kind of webinars on websites and SEO and converting from your website. So we encourage you, we want you to participate with us. So go ahead and put any of the questions you might have in your chat feature or your question feature, and I'll be monitoring those throughout the webinar, and we'll make sure we get those off to Mary. So with that, what I'd like to do is go ahead and introduce Mary. Mary is a fourth-generation entrepreneur. She opened the first business class ISP in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and build out a data center and created a network of business owners so that they could get better solutions using their office internet. She and her team built out two data centers, two wireless backbones, and implemented the first internet-enabled hotel in Oklahoma. She's really passionate about helping businesses solve problems using the internet. And her experience in the internet domain ranges from network engineering and data center management. She worked with Rockwell. Um, in Department of Defense for years prior to be, uh, following her passion as, a, as an entrepreneur. And uh, also, she's worked in a variety of information architecture, um, offers that to many different businesses, and she's got a strong dose of telecommunications, so she really is the go-to person, as you can hear, when it comes to the Internet. She's worked with all kinds of industries and that includes manufacturing and banking and education, uh, energy, nonprofits, legal, retail, service, and telecom. And with this, what she's really focused on these last few years um, has been website, website development. She is she and her team, she runs multiple teams across the US, and they build websites on a regular basis as well as developing internet applications. So Whatever is needed in the range of internet marries your person. And she knows all about SEO. So with that, what I'd like to do is to go ahead and welcome Mary and have her get started. Go ahead, Mary. Hi, Cynthia. Thank you for that beautiful introduction. I really appreciate it. And I'm so happy to be here. Um, should I be taking over this slide? You know, that would be a good idea, and the way that I'm going to do that is go ahead and change presenters now Okay. over to you, and you'll see something pop up. I don't get a pop-up. And we know, that, that, um, we know that we all went through a big Microsoft update this week, so sometimes things behave differently. Yes. Now I've sent it over to you again. I shut your windows down and maybe you'll be able to see. Maybe that's it. Maybe it's behind something. 
I found that last week when I was giving the webinar, I found out that um, for some reason I had one of those pop-up windows in behind a bunch of the screens that I had up, and it took me a while to sort it out, and I wasn't able to do anything. So, yeah, we love these updates. Okay, I got nothing. <laughs> So we might have to. Um, well, well, I'll tell you what. I'll go ahead and keep the screen. You just, I think I can follow okay. with you, follow along with okay. you. We won't change presenters. So with that, um, Mary, let me go ahead and switch over to the next screen. There you are. Yeah, there I am. And I, I like to tell people I'm the chief geek and founder at Design Your Site. And I am a geek at heart, as you could tell from some of the things that I've done in the past, which uh, are very, you know, get into very technical realms. There's not much I haven't done in the internet. I've had a lot of fun. Uh, it's been a, a wild ride. It's been like the Wild West. So I began my career in the internet of things before AT&T was in the internet or before Google existed. So that gives you a little bit of an idea of how long uh, I've been an entrepreneur and been uh, an entrepreneur in the um, internet world, telecommunications and internet. So um, one of the things I wanted to do, because this, these webinars have been building on each other, um, you can always go to the BP USA website and view any of these that you want to go back and pick up the webinar. We've talked about driving traffic to your website. We've talked about engaging visitors, and we've talked about converting customers. So not all of my customers really want to expand their business dramatically. Some of them do, and they get pretty excited when their business, you know, doubles. And sometimes you can see that pretty quickly. Um, so they'll say more, 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 which is how I got the title of this uh, particular workshop. So the things that I want to talk about today are channel y WYFM, increasing conversions, which is the more, 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 and the buyer's journey. And all of those things kind of come together uh, to support that, um, that expanded growth, new business that you can get from your website. So the first thing we're going to talk about is channel WIFM, which I have a hard time saying. And that is what's in it for me. This is what your customer wants to hear from you. So you want to really identify with your business. And I talk to my customers about this frequently because a lot of a website success is marketing success. And we can help business owners understand how they need to make that play on the internet. So I'll ask them to identify the top three problems that they solve or look at um, their top three products. That, and, and so what I want to say about that, and I've talked about this before, is that I always ask them, where does 80% of your revenue come from? Because it usually comes from 20% of your customers. And focus on that because we want to drive success in areas where you're already having success and when we once we get that we can either and we'll talk about that a little bit more we can either tweak that up so you get more of those people or we can say well I really want to build out this product so we're going to apply those principles to a product that's not your 80 percent product but the most important thing is is that if you don't tell your customer the one who's saying what's in it for me what problem you're going to solve for them. Um, I used to work with a, a salesman, I said, uh, Bob Talameo, uh, may rest in peace, taught me so much about sales back in 1999 when I went with him to Florida to help a radio internet startup. And he said, there's only three reasons why people ever buy from you. He said, you're going to make them look good, you're going to get them rich, or you're going to get them laid. Or, or make them feel sexy in some way or another. So that was uh, the old sales strategy. The other thing is, is that people only buy from you if they like you. It's never, ever, ever about money. So if you start driving price on your website, you can bet that your customer is going to make it about money. We don't encourage people to do that. We encourage them to position their website based on their strengths. What are those strengths? So in the next slide, we're going to talk about um, the next part of this is 
increasing conversions. And, um, and Mary, before we move on, so just to emphasize, and I'm going to go back to that slide. I want to emphasize a few things then. Okay. So identifying the top three problems you solve, I think that makes a lot of sense. Filling a personal need and filling an emotional need. So um, you feel like that the websites need to always keep those in mind, those three things. Is, is that, do I have that right? Well, it's more of a, the benefit, right? My widget's blue and it's three by four. And, or maybe it's three by four and it's a machine from uh, a specific titanium alloy and comes in six colors. And that's all well and good, but what problem does it solve for me? And so that's what you want to think about is the problems that you solve. And, it can, and, it's, and it's a personal need because we're not only talking about B2B, we're talking about websites sell people all kinds of products all day, every day or uh, an emotional need. So what keeps your customer awake at night? What are they frustrated by? And business owners, they know this. It's my experience in the almost 20 years I've been doing this. They form their business for a reason because they fill that need and they, they know what it is. You just have to pull it out of them and make sure that they're addressing it on the website. They're not marketers for the most part, not all of them. And, and they may not be the salesperson. They may be the technical person who developed that company. And sales may be a mystery to them. So I always advise them to look at this from the perspective of what's in it for me. You know, what is the customer? What problem are they looking to get solved? How are you helping them? And so we don't sell from features. We sell from benefits. So, example, um, when I was working in Chicago with some doctors who were using an application called um, Dragon Naturally Speaking, which allowed them to talk to their computer instead of typing things in, the benefit to the doctor wasn't clearer notes. The benefit to the doctor was he got his work done earlier and he could go home. So you have to understand what their pain point is, what their emotional need is, what their personal need is, so that you can, because that's the benefit. And so that's the, the point of understanding the benefit and promoting that through these processes that we're going to talk about as we get down to uh, the buyer's journey. Thank you, Mary, for that. Um, one of our participants said, Make me happy, feed me, send me on my way. So with that, we'll yeah. move on. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so um, one of the strategies for increase, and I've talked about this off and on, so I've, I've done a couple of little slides here, for increasing conversions is a little tool that Google gave us called A-B testing. Um, so page A is going to be the initial call to action. And page B is the modified call to action. And this is much simpler than it sounds. And you can set it all up um, on Google. Now, what we, what I'm showing here is that we uh, pulled Google Analytics. And um, let's see, I can't point to that. If you will look at the third column in this data, this is directly from Google Analytics. And you go down to where that green bar is. This is actually, Google will actually track how people come to your website and how they flow through it. And so here we see um, there's like 1.4 thousand sessions. That's 1,400 sessions. And if you, just so you know, if you see that little red or pink colored, this is kind of blurred out. That are the, those are the people who left the website uh, from that page. This is the initial page. This next page here, this next column, is because we know the, our pages, not that one, the one to the left. Thanks, Cynthia. This little thin one in the middle here. <laughs> okay, nope, to the right. Okay, right there, because I know the, the name of the page, which is our call to action, this represents the people who went there and what pages they came from. And so what we want to identify is 
you know, what's causing them to click. Okay, so I think it was um, 27 people came from the home page, something like that. Two came from this uh, wedding designer page, and two more came from the other. And so if we're going to improve the number of clicks we get, then we need to tweak those pages that get to this page. Or, in this case, this is the call to action page, not the button that sends them there. This is the page where we actually get them to submit the information. In this case, we have 42 people, who, this is a month, 42 people who go to this page and 14, and you can see that little red, 14 who leave without filling out the form. So what we want to do is figure out how we can get more people to fill out the form. So on the next slide, I'm going to actually show you a picture of that page. Um, and this is a little bit reduced. But what we do here is we ask people to give the basic information that the business owner needs to satisfy their request. And in this case, um, we're scheduling um, a fitting. Brides want to come in and try on dresses, right? And this is a, um, a family event. It's not usually a bride by herself. It's either her and her bridesmaids or it's her and her mother mother-in-law-to-be, bridesmaids, you know, the groups can get big. And so the things that Deborah needs to know are um, when is the wedding, when do you want to get the fitting. The, these dresses take, you know, you need to give yourself six months. I don't know how, when the last time you got married was, but you need to give yourself six months. So she's like way ahead of the wedding day um, getting these things lined out. So what we want to look at is what is it that would cause someone to take that next step that, that would normally leave, those 14 people who leave. And so one of the things we can do is just change this picture. We want to change one item on the page only. We could change the submit button at the bottom and maybe make it pink and say, get the dress of your dreams now. So there's one thing that we can change and we put it through the A-B testing and give it a month see what kind of a result you get. So you measure those results. Whichever of the pages generates the most clicks, that's the one you stay with. Okay, so let's say that this page still generates more clicks than the one we changed the picture on. We're going to stay with this page and we might change another one item. If you change multiple items, you're not going to know which one is causing the uptick or the downtick in your conversions. So that's how A-B testing works. We'll go to the next slide. The, the main part of this particular um, webinar is I want to talk a lot about the buyer's journey. And this is something that quite a few people are using these days. HubSpot has been a leader in advising people on this. You can find a lot of information on the internet about it. So there's three stages to the buyer's journey. We'll get the next slide. Um, awareness, consideration, and the decision-making process. The information that you're going to give to a person on your website is going to be specific to where they're at in their process. What I want to say about this is, is this is not any more different than a master salesman understands. What we're doing is we're using the website to model that process. So if I call your company and I don't know, I know I'm having a problem, I've got symptoms, but I don't know what's causing it, I don't know how to call your company. So if I'm on the internet and I've Googled what to do about um, blue mold, I won't talk about black mold, <laughs> what to do about blue mold, then I might find a website that has some information on that. That's my awareness because I don't know what's causing it, right? And when I'm in the consideration phase, I'm going to understand the cause at this point, but there may be multiple solutions. I think last month I talked about um, I talked about webworms on pecan trees. 
so there are multiple solutions and some are organic and some are inorganic and so now in the consideration phase I'm finding out more detailed information about how you personally your company is going to go about solving that problem and then when I get to the deci decision phase I'm going to have understood what the ways are of solving it and I'm going to look at specific companies and the services and products that they offer that handle that. So the important takeaway from this slide is you want to craft your website when you're doing lead nurturing and you're generating more sales. You want to craft it to where you have multiple layers of information that you can give to people depending on where they're at in these three processes. So the next slide builds on that a little bit. And actually it builds on each one. I, I wanted to make sure that I gave you guys um, some more detailed information. You could actually just take these three pages of this presentation, print them out, and keep them as a, a reference of when you're building your information that you're going to give away. So in the awareness phase we already talked about the person understands the cause and they're looking for the solution. And so the content that you're going to provide for them is going to map symptoms to possible causes. Okay, so let's, we can talk about, um, what, let's talk about web design. So there might be a white paper and let's say that the the cause that I'm trying to research, I've got the symptoms, my symptoms would be that I don't have enough business. I need to generate more business, I've invested money in a website and it's not bringing me new business, why? And so for a company such as mine, a web-based web development or search engine optimization company, we would generate a white paper which is more of an in-depth technical document, an ebook, which is a little more high level, has pictures in it and, and doesn't get into the nuts and bolts of why things are done the way they are. Webinars, such as we're doing here, they're a very good way to help people be, become more informed about the problems they're having and how to solve them. And then a problem video. Problem videos, a video and a webinar, um, what, because we because we videotape our webinars and make them available, I guess I always think about those as being the same thing. But I realize that not everybody makes their webinars available online after the fact. So those things are a great tool to help inform and educate people when they're in the awareness phase. So we want them to start answering their own questions about why you know, what are, what are the causes of me not having enough business from my website. So the next slide talks about the, the next process that the buyer is going through and this is consideration. So they understand the cause, they know that their website isn't, I'm going to just stick with this solution, they know that their website isn't bringing them enough traffic, okay, and they're trying to understand and it looks like I cut off a word here. They're researching the solution. Now that was the capital C for the next one. The content, the content that you're going to provide here aligns your cause with solutions. Okay, so let's just take that example a little bit further. Um, I don't have enough traffic, and there are multiple ways to get traffic to my website. There is making sure that your search engine optimized so that you are, let's say you're on page number two of Google and there's a thousand people a month who are looking for what you do. Well if you move from page two to page one you're going to get a, a higher percentage of clicks to your website. Okay, If you move from position 10 on Google to position three you're going to get a higher number of clicks to your website. So this consideration phase right now is that I'm trying to figure out how to get more people. There's a thousand people a month looking for what I do. 
I'm trying to figure out how to get more of them to my website. I may be getting a few trickling in, but now I understand that I need to bring my website up in the search engines. For what I do, we've talked about that in a previous um, previous webinar. If we, I remember the one we used for the analogy of shoes. So let's say that um, you have a website and it's a high fashion shoe website and you're selling um, stilettos, patent leather, pink leather, bow, spangled shoes. And I've typed in something about the history of shoes and I get to your website. While I may think they're cute, this is not what I'm interested in so I'm going to leave, right? now. In the case of shoes, if I'm in the consideration phase, there's probably, in this case, you might have a product video. Because if I'm ordering your shoes online, I'm going to want to understand once I try them on. Because we all know that shoes are problematic. <laughs> once I try them on, if they don't feel right on my feet, how am I going to get them back to you? And so that's something you could do in a product video, show how easy that is for people to to buy those shoes and there are several companies doing this on the internet for people to buy those shoes try them on and get them returned for the right fitting solution that they are looking for so we're understanding the cause right now we know that um, what's causing our problem and we're researching the available solutions that are out there I want to remind you that 50% of all web searches are occurring on mobile devices and so having your website mobile friendly is a big plus when people get to your site having them stay there so that they can get this piece of information from you whether it's a slide deck, a data sheet, a brochure, a product video. So what I'm, what I'm wanting you to do <laughs> is understand where your buyer is and make the available data to them rather than just have one white paper that fits everybody's needs. It's too much information overwhelming them with technical details when they don't even, they can't read it and they can't understand it because they don't know at that point they don't need that piece of information. Does that make sense to you guys? I hope that's yeah, you're just saying be sure to parse the information in a way that people can understand it. Talk in their language, I guess, would be a, a way to say it. Um, Talk in their language and make sure that you're giving them that right piece of information. Right. So, um, you know, I, I think about a brochure or a data sheet or slide deck. You want to keep these really short. So webinars are good, but a lot of people want that short, sweet, quick two to three minute piece of information and then they're they, collecting information yeah they want to be able to to um, drill deeper you know based on okay I like what this person is saying I'm gonna go ahead and check out more <laughs> so mm -hmm. and so that content alignment of a cause with a solution let's let's think about an oil field so an oil field equipment solution right I've got a pipeline that I that's critical to production and I'm having a corrosion issue, right? And so if you've got a pipe coating or fitting or whatever that particular element is that replaces that corrosion issue and addresses it, then you've aligned that cause and that solution together. Does that make sense? Yes, that does. Okay. Okay, so the last phase of the buyer's journey, and, and if you keep them engaged with you and moving through this process, learning from you, what do you think is happening? Well, you're showing that you know what you're talking about, and they're developing a sense of whether they can trust what you're saying or not, and they're developing exactly. a sense of whether you're going to solve their problem or not. Exactly. And um, what did I say earlier? You know, people only buy from you if they like you. They usually like you if they can trust you. So all through this process, you're building trust and credibility as you're providing. You're just being a resource. And, and most businesses are good with that. They really want to be a resource to their customers. And so we're just trying to show how you bring that over into a digital environment. 
and um, just do the same thing you've been doing. Be, be a resource to your customers, develop that trust so that you can solve their problems. So they're at the third phase, they're at the decision phase, and they understand you know, the solutions available to them and they're researching products and services. They, all, they naturally have a trust in you because you have been providing them information. You're not trying to hard sell them, calling them up and <laughs> going, when are you going to buy? You're just trying to make sure they have what they need. So the content you're giving them at this point brings your solution to your products and services. So in the pipeline analogy, um, if I've come to the conclusion I don't have to tear out that pipeline and and relay it that I can actually um, with this special coding that your company provides can actually cut out a section, weld it back together. I'm making this up because I'm not in the pipeline industry, right? Uh, but have special fittings that put it back together and put a coating on there that's going to stop the corrosion issue. The content that you're giving them right now links that solution, solution, excuse me, which is the coding and the retrofit to my products and services. Okay, so at this point in the decision process, you're going to give them um, assessments, you're going to do consulting with them, you're going to provide product demos, which is a um, software companies are really big on product demos and case studies or testimonials. So some of these things sound like big things for small companies, right? So when I say case study, think testimonial if you're, if you're not out there with a big case study. My website, um, I love it when my customers say quirky little things to me. Like um, All Star Fence Company, who we helped take their exact same website that they had with another company and put a search engine optimization behind it and give her some tools where she can manage that. Was it, she said one day, because uh, I'm always trying to see if she needs anything else, right? About once a year I talk to her. And she goes, nope, anytime we drop in the search engines, I just go in the back end and uh, change a couple of things. I call it traffic tickling. I said, oh, that's awesome. Can I use that as a testimonial? And she said, yeah. So I said, okay, send me a selfie. We're going to put you on the website. So my customers say funny little things to me like that about the successes we've given them or, um, you know, how they, you know, appreciate how we work with them, things like that. So those testimonials are my case studies. We also have uh, an extensive, we, every, well, I don't say every website, we try to put websites that we've taken live into our portfolio that explain what we did for them. And those are kind of case studies too. So you can read case study, you can read testimonial, you can do product demonstrations, which many of you um, are more than happy to provide to your customers. Um, consulting and assessments. So this is the, the, you know, the final part of that decision-making process that allows someone to um, in, do more than engage. They've been engaged with you all the way through the process. This allows them, you know, you to ask them for the business. And at the end of the day, you have to ask them for the business. Um, unless you're selling things online, like an e-commerce site, you're not going to get the business unless you ask for it. There's a proposal, there's, you know, moving forward. One of the things that I kind of wanted to talk about uh, and before I get into the next one, which I say every time, is is why, important, why it's so important to increase your, your conversions. So, if you're spending $1,000 a month on search engine optimization, which I know people that are spending more, and you've spent $5,000 a month on paid advertising, let's say Google Ads, where you have a total online marketing investment of $6,000, and you're receiving 10,000 visitors per month to your website, and of those 10,000, let's say you're converting 1%. And in the past, in marketing, if you convert 1%, that's a success, by the way. And from those 1%, I'm 
I'm just going to say you're generating $15,000 in revenue. If without, if without increasing your spending, your monthly, you know, monthly spending like search engine optimization and paid ads, you could increase your conversion rate to 2% simply by doing some of these documents, simply by um, doing your A-B testing. You could take your revenue from, from the website from 15000 to 30000 so it's, it's a very powerful thing, and an increase of 1% is a very small amount. So this is where, once we have customers who are getting initial success, that they, open, they want to open the conversation and say, can we do more? You know, can we double that? For me, it's fun. Um, I believe in local economy. I... Um, I'm a very big believer in local economy and helping people in their local markets achieve their goals. I know that small businesses are the backbone of this country, that they employ more people than the Fortune 500 companies do. I know that sounds crazy, but it's real. And so helping them be empowered and having digital solutions is just what makes me, you know, lights me up, makes my... Um, brain tick, I guess. So I love doing it, and I'm always in a very consultative mode with people because they don't know. They're busy running their business, and they need somebody that they can depend on who's going to be honest with them and give them powerful solutions to help them grow their business so that they can keep employing the people they employ and keep money moving in the economy. So. With that said, the, the last piece of this, and I say this every time, measure what works and do more of what works. We showed that in the A-B testing. Um, Google Analytics is free. If you're not running Google Analytics on your website, I highly encourage you to do that. We, we're more than happy to do that for you, help you get set up and, and measure what works. So I really just appreciate you guys being here today. And I hope that this has been helpful for you. Mary, let's take a couple questions. Okay. Um, is there any way to find out how urgent the buyer's journey may be for them? Well, you can ask um, in one of your forms. You can say, you know, in Deborah's case, we ask, when is your wedding day and when do you want your fitting? So you can see, sometimes people will say, I'm getting married next week. And she's like, oh, <laughs> you got to buy something we have in stock. There's no way. So yes, there are ways. You ask. Okay. Um, so really, you, what you've laid out here is a way to build credibility and trustworthiness uh, for the buyer. And, it, and I really found that uh, that the way you did that is, you know, it's very logical and straightforward, and I like the way you show. I've heard so much about people saying, well, you need to have a blog as part of your website, and you need to have uh, you need to have webinars and videos, and you need to have this and that and the other. But I like the way you laid it out in terms of, well, you need something to get them started on the journey. Um, to build awareness, and then um, you need to uh, give them solutions and um, help walk them over to the decision point. So I liked that. Um, let's see if there's, let me, I'm reading through a list of comments. Let's see if people are making different comments. Um, okay. Just, just, I'm sure that you would agree with this that today's buyers. Uh, research more than 85% of what they want to know. And it, that, by the way, what they want to know may be different from what they need to know, but still they research. They do a lot of research online. I know I can say that for myself. I don't do anything without researching online. And um, <clears throat> they're pretty close. A lot of times they're just, you know, they're on websites researching. But um, you just need, I mean, the pathway, once the pathway is laid there, they've done the research, they may hit your website when they're very close to making a decision. So, Right, and, not, and just having a website isn't enough. I'm going to give an example. I'm into 
as I've stated before, gardening and permaculture. And so there's a lot of information out there on permaculture. I've been gardening for a long time. Much of it's very high level. So I decided to try to find somebody local that I could ask a very specific, you know, ask their advice on a very specific um, on the country. So I started looking, you know, just in the local market to find somebody, and I found Green Country Permaculture. And their website, there was nothing for me on there to compel me to call them, to compel me to uh, send an email. So I went, I left, and they're a very young group of people, and it looks like they've done some interesting things in the community. But there was nothing on there, right, for them to say, engage with us. We can, you know, we've got answers or anything like that. I did eventually send an email to a gentleman who I found more information on who, who he hasn't answered it. I'll probably have to go my own way. So not all the information you're looking for is being supplied. There's a lot of um, websites out there that are very mundane. They're not much more than your company brochure, which is only appropriate, where did we say, at the consideration phase. So if I don't get your allegiance or you know some semblance of trust with you when you're in the awareness phase, you're probably not going to come back to me in the consideration phase. So that's the thing that a lot of the companies really need to look at as they're as they are looking at having their website bring them more business. It's not enough, even for somebody who says, "Oh, Joe over there at um, Pipeline Advantage can probably help you." I go to your website and I don't see anything there that's talking about my problem. I'm going to go look at someone else's website. The referral's nice, but if you're not talking to me, you're not engaging me, you're not showing me the answers I'm looking for, I'm going to go look somewhere else. And that's the reality of today's economy. Exactly. So well, well, um, well said, um, a great pathway for the buyer's journey. I like that uh, you set that up for our audience. And um, it, it's clear to me that using Google Analytics, you can see how well, especially with the frequency of transactions, you can see how well your process is laid out in your website and how well it's working. So I really like that. Um, I guess with that, we've pretty much gone through all the different comments. And we just want to thank you, Mary. That thank you is back to you for giving us a great webinar once again and folks we're going to be on Thanksgiving break next week so business performance is taking a break and we just want to wish everyone a great Thanksgiving uh, it's a it's always time to stop and give thanks to all of those around you to your uh, suppliers um, to your vendors to your all those people who serve you in some way or another it's a great time to do that so we're going to take a break uh, we thank you for being on with us today. We look forward to hosting you back in December. I believe that's my birthday, December the 1st. We'll have a, our webinar on December 1st. And with that, folks, I'm going to stop the recording and end the webinar. Thanks so much for being here, Mary, again. We look forward to your next one. Bye-bye, everyone. Much. You're